Hello guys and welcome for another video of Eternum. In today's video we will go over the best ways of making gold in order to progress our characters and of course to get rich. Note that all the methods are worth doing and their income proficiency is mostly based on outer factors such as server population, PvP or PvE oriented players and others. Also note that the different ways of farming gold are not ranked in specific order just because of the mentioned factors. So with the intro out of the way, let's begin with number 20. Daily activities. For the casual players who don't have much time, the game offers daily activities in the form of easy gold in rewards. Those are must do things for each player regardless of the time they play each day. Your first 3 faction quests for the day will reward you 10 times the reward and if you choose to do PvE elite quests, they will net you around 700 to 750 gold. Next on the line are the major corrupted chests or elite field bosses in Elysium Wilds territory which will reward you 2 bags of coins for a total of 500 gold. And lastly, again from the major corrupted portals, on their highest level in Murgard elite area, you will obtain 3 pouches which contain gold and other rewards. Number 19. Farming resources. This is probably the most traditional way of making coin by going for a specific item or resource and to sell it raw on the market. However, this way of farm is heavily contested especially in high populated servers. What you can do instead is to aim your farm into a bit cheaper part of the recipe and due to the less competition you might end up with better coin at the end. Example could be given with the orichalcum ingots which are needed for numerous crafts. People aim so much onto the orichalcum ore that most of them forget to farm the iron, star metal ore and of course the charcoal which is also needed for producing the orichalcum. Number 18. Gypsum Orbs Going back to the daily activities, we cannot miss to mention the gypsum orbs. They can be obtained directly from different side quests, PvP track or getting 5 each day from the faction shop. However, there are numerous ways to obtain the orbs in their different variations of different colors. As you can see, there are quite many of them and all are related to different actions. As the orbs serve in a lot of high-end game recipes, they are frequently getting sold if you have the necessary crafting trade skills such as armoring, weaponsmithing or arcana. Number 17. OPR OPR is the battleground of Eternum where 40 people get into two teams of 20 players and fight each other until one of them reaches 1000 points. All the matches grant you gold and other rewards and of course the winner takes a better reward. If you and your team are way better than the enemy, you can end the match in about 10 to 15 minutes, which is a pretty good gold income. However, keep in mind that you also spend consumables and this might reduce a little bit the profits. Number 16. PvP Track Speaking of PvP, I cannot pass to mention that there is another form of gold farm for the PvP oriented players. This of course is the PvP track and in it you will be able to find different rewards and with the levels they will become even better and bigger. For example at level 200 currently you can get a pile of coin for around 3500 gold for the full PvP track completion. Keep in mind that the gold is not the only reward as there are many valuable perks which can be sold for a high price on the market. Number 15. Perks there are a lot of different perks in the game and many are not really useful or expensive. However, for the most and highly desired ones, especially for PvP, sometimes people can pay up to 20,000 gold for each and you can sell them on the market. The way to get some of the perks is either by opening supply chests all across the Eternum map, farming your PvP track or just getting lucky by opening aptitude boxes from the crafting professions. Number 14. Aptitude Boxes For those who don't know, each trade skill in Eternum is maxed out at level 250. After reaching that level, you will continue to gain experience for that same profession, but the levels will be considered as aptitude ones. Each of those levels have three different checkpoints and for each of them you're gonna receive a box with rewards. Needless to say that the boxes increase in quality the closer you get to your next aptitude level. From such boxes you can obtain trade skill specific items which can cost a good amount of coin. 
For example, if you aim at reaching level 250 in furnishing and then continue crafting cheap crafts for aptitude experience, you can get lucky with loaded dice which is needed for the major luck trophy and it will net you a good profit. Number 13. Market Manipulation A lot of people use the market on daily basis but not all of them use it efficiently. If you have good knowledge of what is valuable and you see items on lower than their usual price, you can simply buy and resell it. Same can be done outside of the action house as many people try to avoid taxes by using the trade channels. Number 12. Buy and sell orders. Same way as the previous point, buy and sell orders can be used to gain a lot of money for common resources. Let's take a quick example with the infused regeneration potions which are used on a daily basis of all active PvP players. You put buy order for 5 gold for each regeneration potion and then sell all the acquired ones at around 8 gold each. Removing the taxes you will get a net profit of around 2.8 gold for each potion. When you multiply that in big quantities, the profit is there and waiting for you. This of course will be combined with other consumables and buffs and also a good tip is to sell your PvP consumables during the war timers. This is usually the time when most of the players who are participating in wars are buying their consumables. Number 11. Repair Kits A lot of people get this as a joke but I still see so many people wasting the potential of making easy gold. Repair kits are worth around 5 cents in case you are the one crafting them. However, on the market and especially at the start of the game, you will be able to sell them for at least 20 or even 30 gold per kit. Don't waste your potential and get that free coin. As we've reached the middle of the video, let me know if you like so far the tips for making gold. If you would like to see more content related to Eternum, you can support me by subscribing to the channel and joining my Discord community server. Now let's get back to the remaining tips of making gold. Number 10. Cooking. Every trade skill in the game can be efficient to bring you money. With cooking however, this becomes everyday thing. As the food buffs are required almost at all times, getting good efficiency and crafting the high tier foods can snowball your wallet really quickly. Don't pass on that chance. Number 9. Daily cooldowns. If you already reach the maximum level of your refining skills, but you don't want to waste time gathering all the materials, you can simply sell your cooldowns to someone else. Getting a fee for the craft of Asmodium and Prismatic Ingots for example is always a good thing, especially if you will not do them yourself. To maximize your profits, try to make sure that Weaver's Fan Ford is under the control of your faction, as this way you will get an additional 10%. Also, make sure that you are equipping the necessary gear, which will also give another 10% chance for gaining extra materials. Speaking of provided service, the next two tips will include exactly that. When we get to level 250, we will be able to craft legendary 700 gear score pieces. This means that we can invest into resources to do mass crafts and then to sell the items for profit. In order to achieve the best return, I suggest you to craft gloves and boots for the armors as they are the cheapest ones to make. Also note that you should aim at 2 perk crafts instead of 1 or 3 perks. More about crafting you will be able to find in my video about it as there I explain how it works and what you need to make it work. The next variation of making gold via crafting is again the service provider. Let's assume that you have everything necessary to craft 700 gear score pieces and that there are many people who would like to use your service. Well, add a small fee to your work if there is no other competition and try to save up from materials by making sure that Morningdale Fort is under control of your faction. More about the forts and their different bonuses you would be able to find in my other video. Number 6. Dungeons while for most people dungeons are a way to obtain good gear, many also farm them for quick gold. The reason for that is the amount of coin which you get for each named boss inside the dungeon. Quickest money makers are the Garden of Genesis and Inuit, as in both of them the runs can be done in around 6-9 to nine minutes. 
You should know, however, that there is a limit of 25 runs per day for all normal dungeons and a limit of 35 per week for all mutated variations. Number 5. Elite Chest Runs Literally, from day 1 of the game, this was, and still is, one of the main activities for casual and not so casual players. Big groups gathering and looting different elite areas in search of rare materials, perks and even gear. Those runs are good as they provide you with a lot of different stuff which later on can either accumulate gold directly by selling the items on the marketplace or if you decide to salvage all that gear. Number 4. PvE Arenas Those arenas are a cool aspect of the game which requires 5 people to kill a boss for a time of 15 minutes. As the gear progression is way higher than it once was, the time given is not a problem at all. The orb serving as key for the entry in those arenas can be either farmed or crafted and many of the times people require fee for an entry. Those same arenas serve as a place to boost new characters to max level, so don't sleep on them as you might get quick buck from someone who wants to boost his character. Number 3. Fishing This profession is really good but a lot of people are still sleeping on it. The latest changes to the cooking made the legendary fish extremely valuable. Apart from those, you will also get other normal type of fish and a lot of other resources which can be used in different stations as arcana or something else. For the last two ways of making coin, I would say that you need a little bit more experience and knowledge into the game and of course it would be more related to group content together with your buddies. Number 2. Invasions Invasions happen each day in different cities on the map. Many companies that own those cities are not really interested into them as this is considered as PvE activity. I've seen many times groups which serve as defenders who are hired by those companies owning the cities to lead their invasions and to defend their cities and their crafting benches. If you manage to get that done for your friends and yourself, you might end up making a good coin for those 25 minutes Plus, you still get a reward from the event itself. Number 1. War The 50 against 50 war is probably the most hyped and amazing type of content which the game can offer. For those who win their wars remains the big reward of having a city and with that there comes a lot of benefits. One of the main ones is that you as an owning company will generate gold based on the territory you rule on the map. The lowest amount is 5% while the highest can reach up to 15% from the total taxes in the server and this is per territory, meaning that if you have more than one territory you can accumulate a lot of gold. Well, that's it from me guys. I hope you enjoyed all the tips for making gold and I can only wish you wealth in your journey across the tournum. If you want to find out what are my 20 tips for PvE and respectively PvP, make sure to click on the videos you see on your screen. Thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next one.